Hey, what's up, folks? Jay Barino here, and this is The Prodigal, a custom campaign for StarCraft II. This is the finale, Episode 8, The Prodigal Son. Use hero special abilities to facilitate your task on the battlefield. Huge, huge special thanks to the Ultragon, who I sent this map to, and he fixed some of the issues I was discussing. Apparently there were two or three issues, and he fixed all of them, so big thanks. Also, big thanks to everybody who reached out to me and said that you would, you'd be willing to take a look. It's just, uh, you know, he messaged me first, and again, um... Very special thanks, because otherwise uh, I was unable to play this. And it's not that I'm a huge dummy and couldn't figure it out, but, you know, I would rather defer to people who have much more experience to fix problems like this. And there have been some other maps in the past I've had to make some mild changes with, but uh, this uh, just wasn't... I couldn't play at all. It would just immediately go and fire the victory trigger. Anyway, here we go. Planet Ire, the province of Albion. That's right, so the Overmind has called us back to Ire. So we've returned with Kerrigan to defend him against the Protoss. We came back to Ire. What is this place? It seems familiar to me. This is Albion, dear Prodigal, the place where it all began, and where it will all be over. Could it be the Citadel of Albion? Oh shit, Morpheus is pissed! I thought he made this whole arrangement so that Albion would be spared. The monuments of our great civilization are turned into a rebel in the channels of full of poisoned water. Beautiful vines wrapped around the fortress's wall dry and turn into a pulsating web of biomass. The statues of our ancestors have been filled by Zerg larvae. Among the cracks in the stone are hatching Zerg drones. Yeah, something tells me he's he's not going to be happy about this. Even the water is contaminated and the grass yellowed and dying. This land is dead. The Citadel of Albion is home to the fallen. Get used to it, Prince. The fortress of Albion in its current form is a picture of tomorrow. After some of the entire planet, Ire after some time the entire planet Ire will be conquered and consumed by the infection. It's a good time to explain to you what this is all about. We managed to break through the protective shade and get to the province of Albion before the Allied troops passed this way. Our master, the Overmind, is behind the western rim of Albion. Tassadar and his gig gigantic fleet are coming from the east, liberating those provinces where there is still life. We managed to cut his way. We stood between the swarm and the Protoss' flotilla, but why? Do you remember the Astrolab of Albion? Look at them now. I put in its I put in it the piece of the Kalos crystal, which we have hidden on Char. I needed only a little element to make. To make? Oh, I'm in suspense. What's this all about? This. Beware, Prodigal. It is the overhybrid, created by the power of the black crystal. There are many times more powerful than any of the Protoss Templar or Zerg creatures. Many times more powerful even than you. In addition, entirely bound to my will. Oh, she's replacing us, you bitch! 
It is strong enough to, comp to compete with Tassadar's Psy abilities and to destroy him on his way to the Overmind. The Overhybrid is my ultimate instrument of destruction. The Fortress of Albion became now a trap for Tassadar and also will become his grave. I like how this ties in to the original StarCraft during the Protoss campaign. It's pretty neat. It also kind of widens the scope of the war of when Phoenix and Tassadar and Raynor return to Ire. I cannot agree to this, my lady. Do not interfere with destiny. He's turning code again! How can you know what prepares destiny? I knew that the creation of this hybrid would jeopardize your position in the swarm. That you can rebel, that you can oppose. However, I have to upset you. Permanent damage to this hybrid is impossible for any mortal. Even if you destroy the surrounding hives to weaken her, the callous hybrid can still not be wounded even by the Dark Templar. I'm afraid that you're wrong, Kerrigan. In the course, when I was expecting your arrival in the nebulous central planetoid, I entered the Zelnaga treasury and also honed a little piece of the callous crystal. At the night, I forged by this fragment powerful callous blades. This weapon is not only one more, only more deadly than regular blades, but also able to hurt and kill callous, the callous hybrid before Tassadar's arrival. Wild card Morpheus. So I think he's upset that she went against her word and destroyed Albion, but then also made this abominable creature that is taking his place within the swarm. Oh my god, look at his side blades. I knew your plans already, no matter from whom, and I decided to prepare myself. I am the only Lord of Albion, and I want to get back what is mine. Fuck yeah, Morpheus. You've done enough damage. Maybe try to roll back a little bit. You are not loyal to anyone. You made a mistake in this conflict, stepping in the middle. And stepping in the middle means death. Let this be your last lesson before dying. So be it, you witch. Time for the fight. Time to fight. Time for fight. Time fight. Holy shit! Corrupted zealots aren't that good. <laughs> that was quite impressive. It does not matter. You and your poor army remain outside the walls of the fortress. The Citadel of Albion is under my control now, so even if you wanted, you cannot threaten me. You're mistaken, Queen of the Swarm. I have still cor the Corrupted Legion loyal to me. A little swarm controlled by my Psy abilities and a few allies as well. I'm going to pick up what needs to be mine. So we are straight up corrupted Protoss. We're not following the swarm, but we're also not helping the Protoss per se. We're just pissed. These towers are very strongly protected. There is not much time. With the sunrise, the Tassadar fleet will come here. And if this callous hybrid will still be living, everything will be lost. Ire will be forever mired in the darkness. If we want to recover the fortress, we must first enter enemy territory. The walls of the citadel are too high. We will have to put on her tower's warp prisms in the phasing mode to throw our forces there. I will personally command the air fleet by the board of the Nephilim carrier. After landing on the towers, we will establish their bases and start and will establish bases there and start to continue the fight into the interior of the fortress. The Zerg will indefinitely put up stubborn resistance. Tonight awaits us the biggest battle that we will ever have to fight, for the fortress of Albion will be will change to be a refuge for all those Templar, which were rejected, which were left alone, which were corrupted. Oh, he's still got some, some Zerg on his side, too. Tonight, the one and only Lord of Albion is coming home. <laughs> this is pretty neat. So basically, I get the impression that Morpheus was... He felt he was abandoned by the Conclave, right? So that's why he's like, fuck, I'll just ally with the Swarm, because I can't win, and I was abandoned by my own brethren. Oh my god, this is crazy. Auto build those. The Nephilim is a powerful hybr hybridical carrier. The conjunction of Protoss warships 
and the powerful characteristics to the Servants of the Swarm. The ship can only be controlled by Predator Morpheus himself with his over Protoss Psy abilities. The Nephilim has the following special abilities. Attached to the Fuselons are Spine Crawlers, which bite all-purpose aircraft which approach the ship. The ability of Void Prison allows the immobilization of any unit for a few seconds, also the enemy anti-air structures. During the battle, do not concentrate on what is happening on the ground. Your task will always affect the sphere of air. Okay, so strictly air. Oh, there's our warp prisms. Woe to our enemies. Okay, so we have to take these units. Our, oh, and our interceptors are free. This is good. Okay, interceptors, I want you to follow the Nephilim. And then carriers, come on over here. Oh my god, this is crazy. This is really cool. You got some custom music happening. This is really, really, really neat. Okay, let's get going. Come on over in this direction. Phoenix, keep, you know, just follow the Nephilim carrier. And where are you now? Oh, it's, it's this one. Okay. So we can't affect what's happening down here. We're just watching this happen. I don't know if these are Tassadar's forces, and we're, we're trying to, like, outpace Tassadar's forces, or are these our forces? I'm not sure. Use the Nephilim void ability to incapacitate the enemy support colonies. No problem. Oh my, I can just use I can just use that very frequently on everything. Okay, warp prisms. Oh dear, my warp prisms are gonna die. Move on over here, warp prisms. So we have to set up our warp prisms on these beacons, I think. And we can get an army inside the base. That's really, really neat. Use these giant tentacles to climb on the walls. Keep moving. Giant tentacles. Oh my god, and you see our, our forces like blinking in. Alright, so we're gonna set up here. Establish warp prisms above the marked points of each of the towers. Okay, set up here. And move on over here. And set up here. Whoa, this is cool. <laughs> this is real cool. Did our Phoenix all die? No, I don't think they. No, they're just following the Nephilim carrier. The first tower is captured, Executor. Does the way to our to another target clear? Is the way to another target clear? Unfortunately not, my Lord Prodator. They are moving towards us with a large horde of corruptors supported by Scourge. We must defend ourselves. That's bad news. Activate all layers of your shields. We need to push back the attack. Otherwise, doom awaits us. We'll throw down a save here as well. So our allied protest forces on the ground have pushed through. This is, it's really cool. It's like you see a cinematic battle happening that you cannot affect. It's really, really cool. All right, throw down a quick save. Where are those scourge that we're supposed to be defending against? I'm not sure, but we're also going to need more warp prisms to move on to the next area of stuff. So, we, uh, we can't attack down there. Okay, so here come all of that stuff. From the west is coming the first wave of a dune. Or comes the first wave. A dune, protect us. So, what I'm going to take, I'm going to use my phoenix and I'm going to move out that, move over in that direction and see if I can maybe kind of cut them off. Wherever they might be. So the, the terrain height is, is like severely screwed up. Not screwed up, but it's made so that it's much, much lower. You can see there's like an overlord floating in the... There was, it was like showing how uh, how far away from the uh, the ground they were. Okay, so can, can these skirts shoot while moving? Oh, these are the original, uh, these are the original scout, or the, uh, the original phoenix that can't shoot while moving. So let's bump up the game speed again. This is absolutely crazy though. Okay, this doesn't seem like that big of a problem. Can you back up. So much is happening though. Like my my game isn't running particularly well. Let's just head back to our to our main forces. And then where is the next section? Defend yourself against three waves of corruptors and scourge. We just kind of just have, we just gotta group up here. That's all. So these are the prince's horde. That's crazy cool. Okay, yeah, so much is happening on this map that it's it's not running very well, admittedly, but it's not, that's okay. And so it seems like we're going to have to defend ourselves, and then we'll probably get some more warp prisms, and then we're going to move on to the next section. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any means of, uh... 
we don't have any means of uh, rebuilding our forces. So I can't, what I'm going to do is move up with the Nephilim. And let let the Nephilim see how the Nephilim has spine crawlers on it. Holy shit, that's crazy ridiculous and cool. <laughs> move up with the Nephilim. Oh my god, I can shoot while moving too. <laughs> this is so cool. Your warriors have engaged the enemy. Okay, so the first wave has been okay repelled we have repulsed the first wave but also taken casualties my lord we could not withstand the next encounter prepare to repel the second wave if there will be a need we will die in albion and this and the time and time will forget about us we were left alone oh shit more a warrior is never alone young morpheus shelter your fleet under the mantle of my mothership i'll matter Fucking Alsuin! I was talking I, I was talking about how much I thought Alsuin was a really cool character. Alsuin, what are you looking for in this dead world? The Protoss' homeworld has collapsed. I want to aid you in this darkest hour. Time to redeem my guilt from the past. You and I, we were the true prodigal sons of iron. To the battle. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's really neat. Uh, I, I like this idea that, you know, we, we are... We are Protoss that, you know, we don't follow... Use Elmander's force field to hide your units and increase their shield regeneration. We are Protoss that were, you know, left to our own devices. We got a bunch more units. Let's just group on up. What do we got here? Mass recall and vortex. Awesome. So, you know, we were Protoss that were basically abandoned by our... by our race. From the north is coming a second bigger wave. Prepare for the fight. Oh my god, this is crazy. All right, let's grab these units. And again, we, you know, we were protest like Alcuin. He was, uh, he was banished, and you know, Morpheus felt that he was a like Albion was the province of Albion was abandoned by the Conclave when you know he he thought that he needed more help. So now we're kind of teaming up to redeem ourselves, not necessarily in the eyes of the Protoss, but just kind of doing what's right so that we can remain, I guess, free. It's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. So let's just move over with the mothership and make sure that the mothership doesn't die. Engaging the enemy. Maybe over here. There we go. Okay, I'm not too worried about this. There's going to be another wave after this, and as they fly in, they're going to get murdered by the Nephilim with the with those. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. So not only are we cloaked. Oh, it makes us regenerate shields faster too. That's great. Okay. But yeah, those spine crawlers just tear up pretty much everything. We're killing scouts fast enough that I'm not really nervous. I'm losing too much stuff. Okay, more mutalisks. Let's just auto attack over in this direction and get rid of these corruptors. I'm not sure if they have uh, any sort of detection right now. As our as our horde is moving in. Really, really cool. The story has been excellent in this campaign. We have repulsed a second wave. We have a little time to repair for the arrival of the last one. Again, this is, yeah, it's really, really good. Again, it's it's hard, you know, to follow the subtitles a little bit in English, but, I mean, you kind of get the general idea. And I knew that Alsuin, the whole thing with Alsuin was going to be really interesting. All right, so, oh, they're right here. All right, this should be fine. Let's move up with the Nephilim carrier. From the east is coming the third last wave. Prepare yourselves. Okay, no problem. The color illuminates my path. And we can always vortex if absolutely necessary, though I'm thinking it won't be. Let them attack the interceptors. We're kind of just in the right spot in the whole position with my carriers. My my prince's horde is not helping us here. I think maybe because the distance to the ground is so far. Yeah, let them come and let, let them just kind of come to us. They're going to make a run for Alcuin's ship, ship, the Almeter. Okay, there. Oh, we have Mutalisks coming in from the other side. That's not a big deal. All right, the Scourge are scared. I expected there to be like huge waves of Scourge, but we're in just fine shape. Let's just auto attack over here. Get rid of these Corruptors as fast as possible. More Corruptors. And again, getting some, some frame rate issues here just because of the amount of stuff. And also, I think maybe changing the camera such that, like, we're many, many layers above where the ground is. It's, uh, it may change. There's a bunch of Scourge. 
Disruptors are repelled. Quick, assault on the second tower. Our ground forces will not withstand such pressure for long. All right, let's do it. Where is it? Right here. Okay, we should be in good shape here. We have, we should have more than enough stuff. Where? Okay, I see our warp prisms are back, uh, back elsewhere. I'm gonna keep my phoenix just sort of back. Let's grab these next group of warp prisms and move them up over here. Okay, they can see us, so that's why I'm just, I'm just sort of going here and attacking through this. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm not sure how this level could be optimized in terms of how it runs. I'm not sure what's causing it to you know, do this, but regardless, it's it's still really neat. Really, really cool. Alright, destroy these, and then we're gonna have to destroy these two as well. Go ahead and, and freeze one of these. Engaging the enemy. Okay, good, and then warp prisms move on up. We're gonna set them up here. Okay, back up. Don't don't carelessly lose stuff here. Let's just get rid of the the spork the spork colonies. There's one right there. So let's set these up so we can continue moving forward. Right, there's one. There's two. And there's three. Attention, warriors! The beast is coming. Stay your ground. Oh, we're we gonna have to fight the. Uh, the hybrid? The second tower is ours, Executor. Can we move to the third assault point? Oh, that's a lot of spore crawlers. That's a, too many spore crawlers. The Zerg managed to regroup their forces. They have locate they're located on the third tower, lots of spore crawlers. Now the attack on the tower might be our last. Who's gonna come to our rescue this time? Lord Morpheus, summon the siege machines. What? When the process of warping will be finished, these powerful war machines flood the third tower with fiery hail. Lord Prodigor, we have detected broodlords moving in our direction. Well, it's good we're all air units then. Broodlords cannot harm us. Certainly they were sent to stop the Protoss from warping in our siege machines. So we're gonna have to pull back and defend these. Protect those siege machines as long as possible. If our plan fails, we will hit the tower without their support. This is really cool. I don't know how many times I can say it. This is really awesome. I mean, this whole campaign, it's, you know, it's its sort of come together. And again, because of the way that the dialogue is written, it made it a little hard to follow. Oh, shit. I hope we arrived in time. We have received your call to fight and decided to pay off our debt. Holy shit. I greet you, Terran Warlord. Your support is invaluable. You came just in time. What? Can we control them? So everything's coming together. Yes, we can! Alright, everybody pull back. Use our Vikings. Use of our Vikings is effective to secure the siege machines. These units are also perfectly suited to carry out the assault without a receipt. Oh, that's that was the whole, like, without a receipt thing that she had said earlier. This is real cool. So let's... Let's just defend... Oh, it's the giant things! It's the giant immortals that I had such a problem with earlier on. Huh. Again, really cool mission, and again, the, the campaign, what I was saying earlier is, you know, had trouble in the past kind of, uh, following, uh, kind of following, uh, the dialogue. But, I really think that, again, the broad strokes of this campaign are really, really cool. Protect the siege machines against the Broodlord strike until the process of their warping in, so that the process will not end. Okay, so let's, uh, oh, there's the Broodlords. Oh, no! Oh, no! One of our siege machines has been destroyed. I didn't know that that's the direction they were coming from. That's garbage. All right, we gotta split our forces a little bit here. You guys hang out over here. Again, I, I apologize for the, the mild uh, performance issues here. All right, you guys get on in over there. I'm gonna take some of our Vikings and move them on over here over as well. I wonder if that was bank data, where like yeah, you needed, it was bank data based on if the uh, the Confederacy shows up or not. I have no idea. You guys attack over here. I'm a little sad that I, you know, I lost one, but ultimately it's not that big of a deal. So we lost one, and hopefully that still does enough damage. Okay, there's the other one. 64%. We should, we have a lot of units here, so we should be okay. Okay. 
And we're, we're killing them mostly before they can even get close and shoot anything. You guys have to, you guys have to attack down there. Come on. You guys have to attack over here. Come on. We can do it. We can hold out. 80%. Very, very close. And hopefully this will help us assault on the third base much easier. It seems like the ground battle, that's, I mean, the ground battle, I think, is really what's causing this to, to run very slow. So much is happening. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're going to, they're going to get it. The third siege machine goes down. Can we hold on to the last one? I, I think so. I think so. We got it. We have to cut these ones off right here. Okay, well, we got one. That's better than nothing. The siege machines are in possession. Track the third tower and begin the, bombar begin the bombardment. Okay, well, let's get rid of these. Okay, well, that could have gone better. It could have gone worse. We saved one. That's fine. It, it counts as completing this. Let's get rid of these broodlords still. All right, it's doing its thing. Can't hold them alone. And even more corruptors that we have to we have to wipe out here. They're still sending broodlords, it seems like. Good God, so much is happening on this map. That's again, it's running not great. So, are we supposed to still protect the siege machine at this point? Because they're still sending broodlords. All right, and here's our other uh, here's our other warp prisms. So the remnants of the Confederacy have come to help us. Yeah, they're still sending these Broodlords. I'm gonna kind of wipe out these waves and then hope that they leave my siege machine alone. And hope that it's just gonna do its thing. We have a very large, very large uh, attack fleet. It certainly seems like these, uh, these waves are endless, so I guess let's go. Oh, I think you get, you get your uh, Warp Prisms back if they die. That's good. So let's uh, grab my warp prisms and tell them to just follow the mothership, the Almeter. Siege machine is still doing its thing, so let's move on over here. It seems like it wiped out. Oh yeah, it's doing its thing. All right, yeah, we didn't need all three. We just needed one of them to finish. Holy shit, this thing is crazy. Okay, so let's move on in. Our siege machines are out of power, but they have fulfilled their task. They sure fucking have. Holy crap! All right, get in there, buddies. It's too many Phoenix. Phoenix and Vikings just back up. Can we land the Vikings? I doubt it, right? No, you can. I'm not going to. I feel like that might break something. Okay, where are my warp prisms? There they are. Warp prisms move slightly away. Oh, no, those are my battle cruisers. Warp prisms. Oh, God. There we go. Got them. All right, set these up so we can move to onto the next phase. Here here and here there we go and maybe we'll have someone else come and try to help and someone else to come and help us now the third tower is under our command it is the right time to send a fleet to the last point of landing probably gonna have to fight the actual hybrid what is this Oh no, they corrupted the defenders. Remember from the first mission? We have to deal with those. So these are the things that we activated the first time. We've detected large amounts of unknown radiation in the vicinity of the fourth tower. Probably Callus overhybrid refuge there. Maybe, I don't think so. <laughs> The hybrid have saturated one of our inactive obelisks with their corrupted power. She has called the protectors of Albion. Overcoming this line of defense is bordered on the miraculous. We're going to certain death. Morpheus, don't give a fuck! Let's go! Lord Prodigor, we managed to locate the, pro the protector's obelisk, which feeds the corrupted protectors. Unfortunately, it is situated far behind enemy lines. We are not able to reach it to unsummon the guardians. We can just fly around them, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Dark Templar! 
Sons of Shakuras, greet your Lord Prodigor. We're scrupulously adhering to the old covenants. We responded to your call to battle. We came to help you complete your task. So because in mission three or four, or whatever it was, on Shakuras we made packs with the Dark Temp with like the nomadic Dark Templar. We can sneak behind the enemy defenses without being detected and destroy the obelisk for you, but only if you promise to exempt us from our service after we will accomplish this task. I greet you, Dark Brethren. You have my word. Fill out this mission and I will release you from your service. Act quickly. Every second counts. This is some awesome shit. I like how all the all the people that you were in contact with from the previous uh, previous missions now use the Dark Templar to destroy the Protector's Obelisk behind the enemy lines. Okay, of defenses. Okay, sure. Can we blink? Uh, well, we don't have blink, so I guess we I guess we can't do this because we don't have blink. Again, it's probably something that uh, was an issue with with the new version of the of the map. That's un really unfortunate. We're just gonna have to kill the corrupted protectors. They do 200 damage. So unfortunately, we're just we are going to suicide into the defenders because we can't we can't uh, get over there otherwise. We just have to kill probably one of these defenders. Okay, back up, back up. Okay, they don't have so much health. Then it's a huge problem, but we're, we, I mean, we have to kill them, unfortunately, because we can't get over there with Dark Templar. But what we can do is, you know, kill one or two of them, like that, and then we can just float over the enemy. and destroy it ourselves, maybe. But we've lost a lot of Void Rays. We've lost a lot of our stuff that can attack ground, so that's the bad thing here. Let's start moving in, bump up the game speed again. And we can help uh, our ground units kind of push through this area. Don't chase, don't chase. Don't chase. You guys need to back up. You guys all need to back up. Back up, ah, uh, we lost the Void Ray. Okay, so everybody start pushing over in this area. Oh, oh, battle cruiser. I'd like to move in and destroy the, obel or destroy the obelisk. We're not gonna be able to use the Dark Templar There we go. Our units have destroyed the obelisk. Why is that failure? I mean, does that did that still disable them? It should have. It did. That still disabled them. So let's grab our warp prisms and start moving them up here. We're going to move them up to this direction and then over. And again, it's because we didn't have blink, a very mild thing that, you know, we couldn't Engaging the enemy. couldn't do anything about. But that's okay, it's really not a big deal. I could land these Vikings just to kind of help, have them help out. Let's do it. Do we have Yamato? Oh, we've had Yamato this whole time. Your have the enemy. This is that good shit right there. Okay, Warp Prism's coming in, and this is the last tower, so we theoretically finished it. We're trying to secure the Astrolab for ourselves so that we can... Stop this horrific abomination from whatever it's doing. But again, I, I really, really enjoyed this. This is one of the coolest campaigns I've played just because of the uniqueness of it and how it takes place during the uh, during the original Protoss campaign, kind of in the background. It, it also explains where the Callus Crystal came from. That's pretty neat. Alrighty, our, our Protoss ground forces have, have secured the area thanks to our Help from the our Dark Templar nomad allies, Master Alcuin, and then the the remnants of the Terran Confederacy. Some good shit right there. Uh oh. The overhybrid has destroyed our prisms. We will have to set up new ones if we want to lead an assault to the end. Warriors in other locations will not stand too long. Void Rays, I command you to strike. Oh god. Oh god. 
a, a nice little touch there that that also killed the roaches. I'm reporting that the over hybrid is powered by Zerg hives. Until they're not annihilated, the hybrid can until they are annihilated, the hybrid cannot be hurt. The hybrid is too powerful. Our aircraft are precipitated from the air like flies. We will not cut through. Soon we will be repelled from the walls. We have failed. Nah, man. There is a way, young Morpheus. I have now learned a lesson of my existence. It is time for you to learn yours. Fight, Morpheus. Fight and never surrender. Never leave your friends on the battlefield. I mean, if you would count any of these people that came to help us as friends. Master Alsuin. Concentrate all power from your energy shields on the ometer. I'm giving you my coordinates. Is it... Is he basically going to pull a Tassadar here and, like, suicide himself to destroy the Zerg Hive so that we can kill the, the hybrid, maybe? Activate the power of the prismatic cores. Labio, my brother, forgive me. I am returning to the Kala. Oh, yeah. Wow, he got him! This is some straight-up Tassadar shit. Behind the scenes. It's one of those things that's interesting to think, like, if he, we hadn't done this, then Tassadar would have never been able to destroy the Overmind later. Your sacrifice, brother, will not be forgotten. The siege ended successfully, but by the highest price. Alcuin, you will be avenged. The old fool sacrificed himself to give you some time. It does not matter. Hybrid rapidly regenerate her forces and, and will be reborn again. Meanwhile, it appears that you have company, Morpheus. Look to your back. The Gantra Thor. Predator Morpheus, once Praetor, I heard about your terrible deeds. The slaughter of the defenseless Terran settlers on Char and murder of my brothers, the Conclave's executors on the surface of Saluk. For those and other crimes, I have been tasked to take you before the Supreme Court. You will be taken there by force. You are making a big mistake, Praetor, but I cannot wait for the moment when we face on the battlefield. We ain't got time for this infighting. Oh my god, there's more. Kala's blades are much lighter and more deadly than the blades of ordinary zealots. They're also the only weapon capable to hurt Kala's over-hybrid. Prayer Morpheus is therefore the only unit in the game that can inflict damage to the hybrid and kill her. Morpheus wearing battle armor also has stronger energy shields. There's more! Holy shit! Destroy Zerg Hives located on the Citadel to weaken the Zerg to weak the to weaken the Callus Hybrid. Destroy Predator Phoenix's base to end the fight on two fronts. Wow. Wow. Uh I'm thinking we split this. This is this is a two-parter. I can't believe that this is still going. And this isn't a separate mission. I really thought like the whole campaign was over. Okay, well hey, uh. What's happening here? Failure is never I'm sending the coordinates of a future base. We're going to establish it on top of a third tower without a receipt. What's her... You know, she's talking about these receipts a lot. The Confederates have the status of allies, which are sharing with you their field division and control over units. That means that you can give to the Confederates commands manually, but essentially 
but they will still operate on their own. That's cool. These activities will not be able to continuously observe through shared vision. Their general direction are the swarm bases in the region. However, you do not share mind resources. Further, there's a chance that you will need to help your allies in the case of a siege on their bases. So we can... Okay, so we can control them, but they still function on their own. I like this a lot, and most likely I will probably just leave them alone. Wow. Uh, really, really neat. So this series is going to go on longer than I originally expected. Or maybe I'll just put both episodes up on the same day. I don't know. The point is, we're not finishing this right now, because there's still a lot to do. A lot to do. We have a whole map set up to do right now. Alrighty, well, hey, this has been Jay Barino. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye now.